Hi, I'm Julie with Shrink It's in my Shrink Plastic Art. And today's video is going to be about wings. And on my Etsy site and my website, I have wing templates. And my Etsy site is Artmaker58. And I have several sheets of patterns. This is just one of them. And these come in all different formats, including the SVG that your Cricut Electronic Cutter needs. And then my website has them also, plus a lot of other shrinkets, uh, more links to free tutorials and my online classes and all my product. And you can get two art makers by visiting juliehaymaker.com. So there's the important information about where you get the stuff that I demo. Now, I've got the template and I'm gonna demo some of these. Um, I'm gonna be coloring, showing you how to cut out and shrinking. And then some really simple, uh, I'll display some really simple, simple, simple creations you can make with them. Uh, so, the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to cut out. I've got some pastel that got onto my shrink plastic over here. <sighs> Just ignore it. Um, so let's take this large one over here. I'm going to get the clean end, and I've got my pencil, and I'm just outlining around this. Now, this I would use, this large piece, I would use as a pendant or... Um, I would use it as an embellishment in, um, like in journaling, uh, scrapbooking, card making, um, tag art, uh, quilting art, really would be wonderful in quilting art or embroidery. The shrink plastic is wonderful for all those things. You just simply put your holes in it where you would want them to be. Let's say if you were making it for a quilt or an embroidery piece and you wanted it a button, you would just put two holes right here and there you have a button with, that you would cut with your punch. If you wanted it to be a necklace and you wanted to hang it up here, you would put holes there. Um and so on and so forth. So if you're not um, if you're not using an electronic cutter and you're hand cutting, I'm going to show you how to hand cut. I like to use these scissors. They're called, I believe, Pro Shears, and I buy them from a company called Euro Tool. And I think I can get them on Amazon. And how you know um, that they're these scissors is they have the white and red handle. And so I'm just going to cut within the margins and get the big uh, scrap off of this. And then the crucial thing that to cut in shrink plastic is to keep your scissors at an angle. Not up and down like this, but an, an, at an angle. So I'm coming in here at an angle. And that way, see how I can pivot around corners by not only moving the scissors, but moving the shrink art. I could even do this. But I'm going to show you another trick on the other side of the wing for cutting around that. So I'm staying at an angle. That is crucial. It'll make all the difference in the world. And this is why I hand cut the majority of the time. Um, it also helps if you're good with, you know, hand-eye coordination. So see how I can flip this over and just come in here? That's another way of approaching an intersection like this. I keep my eye not on the scissors so much, but on the line. If I watch the scissors, I don't see the line. So I, you know, I just keep my line, my eye on the line and where I'm going with it. Not where I'm cutting, but where I'm heading. 
And then I'm going to come in here with a gum eraser and erase any pencil lines that show. And I erase those little button lines that I was showcasing because I'm going to be cutting it as putting hole punches as a pendant. Now this is the McGill Long Reach Hole Punch and it's a nice punch to have in case you're doing any kind of large shrink and need to reach in that far. Most punches only come to there and this one here is a two inch reach and it's crucial. I carry these on my website in my favorite size which is an eighth inch and it shrinks down to a 16th inch. I carry a 16th inch and it shrinks down to a 32nd inch and it fits perfectly on the pin of my molds, but it's not my favorite size. This one here is the eighth inch. And then I carry a quarter inch for large holes, like if you're using large hole beads, large hole beads. So here I am and I've cut those holes and that's cutting, oops, cutting with the shrink plastic. Okay, now I've, I've showcased mo all of these are double winged, but you may want to make them single wing. So I'm going to showcase the uh, little bee wing here and the little uh, dragonfly wing. And this over here is kind of some kind of little like ladybug wing. You know how their bodies are really big and then they open up their little shells and the wings look really tiny and they fly kind of slow. That's probably why. So on this one here, the bee wing, like what if I want to make earrings? I'll show you. I just come like so. Okay. And then do the other side. Just come like so. And I'll punch a hole there and punch a hole there. Now let's talk about the dragonfly wings. For stability, I didn't cut this in really tight, but if you want to t cut it in tighter once you you get there, you can, want if you want to make it for earrings, for stability as a pendant or something, I didn't want to make the wings too fragile. But if I was making them to hang as earrings, they could be a little more fragile, meaning that this distance here from here to here could be greater, to, could be tighter. So here I'm going to come in, and this is where I'm going to do some artist license with this. Okay, and the same over here. I'm coming in. And now I'm going to cut those out in the same manner off camera and I'll meet you back here. I have everything cut and I cut out this monarch shape or traditional shape butterfly and that's the first one I'm going to be demoing um, with doing color on it and um, I'm going to go in with inks. And, and, and demoing how you can color whole backgrounds with just inks. This is a really dried out pad. Ready for me to put a refill, re-inker on it. Um, that's what I like about the Ranger inks. I like everything about the archival inks, but one of them is the ability to buy re-inkers for them little jars of inks that make the pads last forever. And you can, you know, pick, you buy the pad, which is nice, once you got your color. And then once it starts to dry out, if you have the reinker, I, you know, sunflower yellow, I can just go forever with that, with a reinker for about $5. Um, then Archival makes a color called Monarch Orange.
and I'm showing you that um, I love layering colors. One color is just boring. I'm putting heavier color here. And going to leave it like so. And then a monarch is all about black edges. So I always test to see how much, um, how juicy my ink pad is. And this one will probably need to be re-inked. So I'm going to get my re-inker and re-ink it. This is the re-inker. I'm going to let that sink in a little bit. A um, really important thing with working with inks and pastels is to have wet ones. So I'm just going to tap that lightly. Look at the difference. Ouch! I'm going to get some of that off because I never want to, on shrink plastic, go that heavy. The ink just won't dry on a non-porous surface. I'm in holding it up at first to get my edges and then I'll uh, put it down to blend those edges. There. Using a really light touch on this. Then I'll build up more color. Pounce it on. it how I have it. Hold that over. And always, 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 always blot. Always blot. No matter how dry you think your ink is, blot, blot, blot. See, you don't want to rely on the heat gun to dry your ink. These inks are made for papers, not, and that's porous surface, not um, non-porous surfaces. But if we can get them dry before we put them down, before we heat them, they will work just fine. So now I'm coming in with my colored um, pencil and I'm going to create veins. And um, I'm not that interested in making this an absolutely perfect monarch for this demo today because it's just a demo. And now I'm coming in here a little stronger. And I'm blotting. Blotted. Ended up blotting most of that up. Uh, but um, what's going to happen is this is going to shrink down and it'll come across as really black because it the 
colors intensify 50%. So what does a monarch have on it that we love, at least I love, is white dots. So I wanna make sure that that black's really dry before I come over with this because it probably, no matter what, will create a little bit of gray. Putting some white reinker on my pad and, and I'm going to blot. See, and blot again. There. And then smooth that out. Um, and then the other thing that I'm going to do, if you're having trouble getting your ink dry, I don't want you to heat it. I don't want you to shrink it. But you can take your heat gun and hold it at a distance away from it, 8 to 12 inches. Anything else might start to shrink it. And that can dry up your paper. I'm getting a lot of this off so I can be really soft with this. And then I'm blotting. And yeah, that's, uh, it, it will show. It will show. And now um, I'm going to let that dry. And we will shrink that down in a little bit. Now, Let's wipe our hands off. And I'm going to get ready for the next. While I'm working with black and white, I'm gonna continue that with the bee wings. And if I forgot to mention, this is just all on the frosted side. So. This one here, I'm gonna be showing you how to add some iridescent spritz. And we are coming up first. We're going to add uh, veins. Doing that with the pencil. And this is organically. Meaning I'm not drawing from it. I'm not tracing. I'm just coming in here with how I would see um, bug wings happening. Veins. They tend to have these little loopy things in them. These little things, so. Nice, sharp, black Prismacolor pencil. So, um... I'm not concerned that each one look identical. So now what I'm going to do is come in here with a bit of black shadowing around the edge. So I'm coming in taking a lot of my black off of my dauber and just coming in here with a minimal shadow. You could do this with any color. And because I'm working with black or anything I'm working with and it's messy, 
wiping my hands with wet ones. Wet ones are great for cleaning the ink off. And then cleaning it off your stencil too. So I'm wiping down my stencil in case I want to use that later on with other colors. Now, I'm going to demo. Next, I'm going to demo how to use this spritzer on here. Okay, this is Sheer Simmer Sp Shimmer Spritz. And you can buy this on my website, which I showed you at the beginning. And you shake this up. And this is once again made for paper art. So that's a porous material. And we're going to be using it on a non-porous surface. So I'm shaking it up. And I'm. if you want to put a heavy coat on, it'll be really glittery. Because remember, the glitter uh, intensifies 50%. So I just recommend a light spritz. One, two, three. Okay, and now how we dry that is the same way I was showing you on the ink, about seven, eight to 12 inches away. That's pretty dry. So I'm going to put that aside to also dry a little longer. And the next one I'm going to do for you are the dragonfly wings. So I've got my dragonfly wings and I want to show you how much more I cut in here with these. Because, you know, I don't want this to be fragile if it was going to be a necklace. Um, but you can cut in even deeper if you want to. And it'll give it more of the effect of two wings instead of a connected wing. But we always have to keep in mind the fragility of shrink plastic when we're wearing it. Even, you know, just the bigger the piece of anything the more tension it's going to receive. So um, I'm going to be coloring these. I think of a dragonfly is greeny blues, but the one that visits my yard is bright orange. He's a big one and he's orange and it just is so exciting to see him. So I'm gonna put all the colors of the rainbow on this. These are pastels. I use Prismacolor New Pastels. Any will work. And I have a video on using pastels on shrink plastic. Um, and so just click through the videos and watch it. So what I'm going to do is come in here and edge this with purple. And I'm going to be really careful to try not to break this. Whoops, and it's cracking a little bit. That'll probably fuse when I um, shrink it. I hope.
and I'm going to bring this in here, this shadowing, to help me say this is a divided wing. Um, put a little purple there on those tips. Okay. Plot. And I'm going to come in with my black for really delicate veins on this. there. And because I have that black on there, if I've just got a little bit of this on here, I'm going to give a little bit to the tips. And sometimes I simply use black just um, because I wear black. So if I've got something I'm like, oh, that's got a little black in it, that'll go with this. Okay. Now, on to the next one. The next one we're going to do is the large piece. And I'm going to make use pastels and stamps on this. And stencils, I mean not stamps, stencils. I'm going to make this Notice how I'm just blending these colors and I'm not being as, I'm being more like I was with the dragonfly wings because I'm going to make this more, um, this is just the base and more of a fantasy piece. And I'm getting my stencils over here. And I'm coming in with a stamp. I mean, a stencil. Constantly using those interchangeably. Sorry. So I'm pouncing, and I can I can twirl a little bit if I've got. A dry pad. All of my pads are constantly needing re because I'm using them all the time. You want to hold firmly with your stencil. You don't want it to shift on you when using a pattern and creating a pattern that is centered. You can peek under it and see how you're doing. So I'm building up always towards the narrow part for me and fading out because I'm going to bring in other colors over here.
better to build up ink and use a drier pad than to um, put too much ink on. And I am going to be um, burnishing And then I'm going to come in with violet and do another pattern. It's kind of a, another smaller version of this ornate. See how I'm doing. Do the same over here. strong enough there and uh, yeah I better put a little down here Then I'm coming in with white. And I love using the polka dot. And I have stencils for sale on my site that I really like to use. So, um, I'm going to have to blot. And what I'm going to do now is come in um, with little dots up here. Just, I'm just going over the pattern. I'm not, I'm just building pattern on pattern on pattern. And this is with colored pencils. And I'm using a magenta color. A little strong on that one. And I'm going to give this guy some veins. Not a whole lot, just maybe three. Get a darker, this one's called Majestic Violet, darker version, and I will be outlining.
And these are always tricky to go around. Come in here and add some. This is like a nice, real, a really nice shadowing. Now, for something unexpected, we're going to, I'm going to cut this because this template doesn't go all the way to the edge. And when you see what I'm going to do, I'm going to protect that right there, and I'm going to protect that right there. And what I'm doing with the spritzer is this right here. So we're spritzing a pattern and you'll see you see that's why i didn't wanna i didn't have a big enough template so i didn't want a paint line on that so now i'm going to be drying that let some of that air dry it's taken a little bit of time and I also can I feel I got a little too much on because it's slow to dry I can um, blot it up and then and then just test it so if you think you get too much on blot it up It's pretty dry now. You can see the glistening pattern on there. Okay. So now we're going to shrink things down. I like my container for shrinking pieces because it contains the heat. If I shrink a large piece outside of a container, this side will remain cooler as this side is warmed up and no matter where I'm moving my heat and because of that heating unevenly the shape can shrink down and not it, it awkwardly and lose its original shape and be mishappen where if I put it in a container even if it doesn't fit all the way the heat stays contained and the piece shrinks evenly thus when it shrunk down it usually 90 percent of the time solves the problem with an an irregular shape so we're gonna start with um our uh b wings so here are b wings and i'm going to have my wooden block handy to um, put on them to keep them flat. And this is my hand forming kit that comes on my site. And this is a silicone bowl. And 
he's done moving on its own accord and it's almost flattened all the way. I just got a little bow in him, but enough that he's done shrinking. So it, by all means, don't overheat because then you just start melting the plastic. And that's so cute. done shrinking a tiny little bow in in it um i just place it the weight of that block is enough to hold it down how can how you can tell if you've over shrunk something see how this edge is frosted if that get in really crisp that's how you want it if that starts to get kind of rounded and really shiny you've overheated it that edge so you want that nice and and crisp. So there are our little bee wings. Now, next, we're going to do our monarch. Our pseudo monarch. Notice how I will keep the heat out to the perimeter of the shape. That's done shrinking and definitely needs to be flattened. And there's our pseudo monarch, lovely on both sides. For just an easy monarch, I like how he turned out. Next one we're gonna do is our big, large purple. that it doesn't touch itself. So uh, this is when I usually get in there and do a little flipping. Now, even though it hasn't totally flattened out, it's done shrinking. And I will come in here and flatten it. And I might for this one just, I could always give this one just a tiny bit of a bow. If I wanted the wings just a little bowed out. Not too much because I may want to put something in the center here. So there I am. So here I am with a few examples of what I've done, and I've just done really simple. On this one here, I used the shrink it beads, and I used components that you can find on my Etsy site, and I simply used E6000 to glue those on the wings. And then these are silk ribbons that I got at Rings and Things. 
and um, I like over here this is just attaching it just really basic jump rings on the chain and then a little rhinestone component that has a connector on it so I could put a little charm there to add something to it over here just um, putting them on ear right wires and over here just using bead line to bead a um, figure eight through there and attach it on a ear wire so that's um, how to use my wing templates and several techniques on how to get variety with that so i hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please like and subscribe thank you